reading from the book of Sirach. Wisdom sings her own praises. Before her own people, she proclaims her glory. In the assembly of the Most High, she opens her mouth. The presence of his host, she declares her worth. In the midst of her people, she shall be exalted and shall be revered in the holy assembly. In the multitude of the elect, she shall be praised, and among the blessed, she shall be blessed. I spread out my branches like a terebinth, my branches so bright and so graceful. I bud forth delights like the vine. My blossoms become fruit fair and rich. I am the mother of fair love, of fear, of knowledge, and of holy hope. In me is all grace of way and of truth. In me all hope of life and strength. Come to me, all you that yearn for me. Be filled with my fruits. You, you will remember me as sweeter than honey, better to have than the honeycomb. He who eats of me will hunger still. He who drinks of me will thirst for more. He who obeys me will not be put to shame. He who serves me will never fail. Verbum Domini. Suffer want and go hungry, 
but those who seek the Lord lack no blessing. Reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Brothers, while we were not yet of age, we were like slaves subordinated to the elements of the world. But when the designated time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to deliver from the law those who were subjected to it, so that we might receive our status as adopted sons. The proof that you are sons is the fact that God has sent forth into our hearts the spirit of his son, which cries out, Abba, Father. You are no longer a slave, but a son. And the fact that you are a son makes you an heir by God's design. Verbum Domini. Viscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Upon arriving, the angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored daughter. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. She was deeply troubled by his words and wondered what his greeting meant. The angel went on to say, Do not fear, Mary. You have found favor with God. You shall conceive and bear a son and give him the name Jesus. Great will be his dignity, and he will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever and his reign will be without end. Verbum Domini
One day, many years ago, many, many years ago, about 800 years ago, over that, St. Francis of Assisi was in a church, and the church was in ruins. And while he was in prayer there, there was a cross. It's called the Cross of San Damiano. That was the name of the church. And while he was sitting before the Lord, Jesus spoke to him and said, Rebuild my church. And St. Francis, of course, at first took this literally. He thought that he would have to, you know, get bricks and mortar and, you know, beg for this, beg for the funds to literally rebuild this church. And there were two others he did. But God was calling him to something different. To rebuild the church is to bring life into the church. To help save the church. But Francis could not do this call alone. Of course, he would have the help, the grace of the Lord Jesus, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But he needed his mother, our mother, the mother of God, our blessed mother, Mary. And so one of the churches he would rebuild was called Our Lady of the Angels of Porzi Juncula. And it was there where he, re where he knew his mission. It was there where he founded the Friar Order of Friars Minor. My brothers and sisters, you know, Francis, St. Francis gives us a great example, wonderful example of how to rebuild the church. Deep love, love for Jesus desire to live the gospel, desire to preserve and protect the church. And we too are called to do the same. We too need our mother, because it is our mother who, who prays for us, who's, who stays by our side interceding for us, who protects us, who sends forth angels to guard, to protect us. And it is, it is our mother whom we look to as inspiration, as an example of charity and fidelity. We see courage in her, virtue, ex extraordinary virtue. And so in our own call, we need her. Well, St. Francis, as we know, was, was radical in his love for Jesus and the great desire to live the gospel literal, to do everything like Jesus did. And as he received this call, as I was saying earlier, he went to, of course, he, he rebuilt the, the walls of, of uh, San Damiano. There was another church called St. Peter's. Then there was another one, very old church, very small, tiny. Our Lady of the Angels of Port Siuncle. And this, this little chapel had been, been around already for, for a couple of hundred years, you know, going back to the, the sixth century. And it was owned by the Benedictines, but it, it, was, it was crumbling there. And it, was, it had a reputation of, of people having experiences with the Blessed Virgin Mary, to, of, of experiencing her love. And sometimes there were, there were people around the, the town who said that they can hear angels singing there. So Francis rebuilds his church. And there, you know, there he, one day reading the gospel, where Jesus says, you know, where he sends out the disciples. He says, don't, don't take a walking stick. Don't, don't, don't take any food with you, you know. Go out and preach. And there, there's where he, he got the inspiration to live a li life, the gospel life, a life of poverty, the life to, to like Jesus, who, who had nowhere to lay his head. So it was right there where there was the birth of the Franciscan order. 
And we see that, uh, that, that our Blessed Mother is, is, is always there for the most significant things in the church. Of course, you know, she is a mother of God. The temple where Jesus lay, you know, and Jesus, the, our Lord, our God, her Savior. And then we see that the Blessed Mother is present at the, at the, at the Pentecost, you know, the birth of the church, and at various other movements and and great things in the church, she's there, she's present. And this is especially true of the Franciscan order. Because right there at Our Lady of the Angels of Portiuncula, there's where, where Francis's followers begin to, to, to come together. Then they built little huts around there. You know, so this would serve as, as a mother house of, of the order. And there the, the friars would have their, their meetings, um, that, which we call chapters, that come together. You know, this, this was a beautiful place. And it was so special that St. Francis requested that there be a plenary indulgence. And this was granted to him at the Pope, at the Holy Father at the time, uh, Pope Honorius III. So, like, and it still exists today. So on this special day of Our Lady of the Angels of Portiuncula, you can receive a plenary indulgence for visiting, of course, that church, which is now uh, uh, in the Basilica of St. Francis of Assisi, but also any, any church that is, uh, that, that is run by Franciscans, any church named after Our Lady, you can receive the plenary indulgence. Of course, you have to do everything that is required to receive the, the plenary indulgence, but it, it is here for us. And so, my, my brothers and sisters, you know, we see that Our Lady, that she was a great example, great inspiration for St. Francis and the first friars there. And, you know, we look to our Blessed Mother, we look to her example, and she, she is a woman who is faithful to God. She, of course, she's perfect, you know, immaculately conceived. She, 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 has, she, she has a great love for the Lord, great charity, great virtue. And we see this, her, by, her, by the way she followed Jesus in such humility and fidelity. We see this great love proved because she goes with, with the Lord all the way to the cross. She's right there. And it is there, of course, where, Saint, uh, where, where the Lord Jesus said, Woman, this is your son, your son, your mother, Jesus giving her to us. So it is necessary for us in our vocation to have our blessed mother with us. But, but look at this charity, look at this courage. This is a model for each and every one of us. Now, in these times, we've seen the church attacked. You know, in our call to, to build up the church, you know, we are to be out there evangelizing through, of course, our words, our deeds, works of charity. But at the same time, to protect the church. I mean, lately, in the past few months, there's been desecration of saint statues. Churches burned. Churches vandalized. It's time to wake up now, to call upon the prayers, the intercession of our Blessed Virgin Mother, that we may have the courage to speak up and to work to preserve and protect the church. And if we live in this country, and, and this may apply to other nations as well, we can do that by the way we vote by protecting our religious freedom. We're gonna have elections in a few months, in November. Now, I'm speaking here personally, of course, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a priest, I'm not favoring any, any party, but I speak as, as, as a son of the church, as a priest of Jesus Christ. 
You know, my first allegiance is to, is, to, is to the Lord, to the church, to my superiors, the Pope and the bishops. But I gotta, I gotta, we got to mention the things that, that are attacking the church. Now, one party, as we've seen the last three and a half years, has worked to protect life from conception to, to death, natural death, and has worked to protect our religious freedom. Where the other party has not. Now, okay, this, you think, well, they, they love people. Well, of course, but the church loves people. The, the, the church is all about people. The church welcomes all people. Church is not racist. Maybe there are individuals who are, but the church itself, the bride of Christ, welcomes everybody, loves everybody. Our call, our preaching is Jesus Christ. He says, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. And that is the, the work of the church. And, we, and the church does this through its, through, through its outreaches of feeding the poor, of its hospitals, of, its, of, of education, of, all, of various works of charity. But yet, there are people who attack this, who want to limit what we do. Now, in, in the last weeks or so, as I was saying, there's been an attack on the, on the church, on various churches. Okay, who's speaking, who, who, who's, who's addressing this? What party is, are, is saying things, is, 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 saying, is coming against these attacks? No. I mean, and we've even gone, seen so far that, that one side here even defends those who, does, who do violence. And some of them are calling themselves Catholic. Catholic by name. You know, if they're truly Catholic, God is first. He says that you cannot serve both God and mammon. You love one or hate the other. You can't have both. Jesus says that, you know, those who, who follow me, he says, come to follow me, take up your cross and follow me. He says, whoever saves his life will lose it. Whoever loses my life for my sake will find it. And I don't see that in, in, in some of those politicians. Yes, maybe we don't like the current administration, but sometimes God writes straight with crooked lines. So, my brothers and sisters, we can look to the example, of course, of we look to see St. Francis who calls upon Our Lady to help in, in his call and his vocation to rebuild the, to rebuild the church. And so should we as well, calling upon her that we have the courage, you know, that we not fear. We do all things for love of God and Jesus Christ, even if it means sacrifice. But we are called to protect, to defend our church. And the grace is, for, is here for us. That's where we receive confirmation. Is, is in, the, in confirmation, we are anointed by the Holy Spirit to, to preach and live the gospel of, like Jesus Christ and to defend the Catholic faith. So my brothers and sisters, God is with us. Call upon our mother now. Look, look to her example of charity and fidelity, her courage. Now she's with us to pray for us, to guide us, to help protect us. And God is with us. God loves us. So be strong. Be courageous. Go out and rebuild the church. Defend her for love of God, love of his people. God bless you all.